philosophy also talks about the soul. Soul that is immortal, soul that is capable of transmigration. The Greeks also talked about the soul. Aristotle wrote the enema. Enema meaning the soul. Now what is it that uh, from one point of time we stopped talking about the soul and started talking about the self. Soul became the self. But in present times, now we no longer use uh, words like the soul or the self. It has become a subject. And subject is a grammatical category. There can't be any sentence without a subject. Subject, verb, object. So subject is also subject to something. Like for example, the philosophers of phenomenology pointed out that consciousness is always consciousness of. Consciousness is not a substance. It is a function. Consciousness is always consciousness of. Likewise, subject is always subject to. Subject to desire, subject to the Indian constitution, subject to the rules of the society and so on and so forth. Subject. So it is now a question of adjusting the kind of relationship between the subject and the object. And I come back to what Heisenberg said. The transparent clarity of mathematics. So you are all mathematicians, all physicists are mathematicians. And, and I was sitting beside Professor Basu. And I'm always afraid of the physicists. And when I'm in the presence of physicists, I always remember Ernest Rutherford, who said all science is either physics or some collecting. All science is either, sci either physics or some collecting. He proved himself wrong in his own life because in the year 1908, he was awarded the Nobel Prize not for physics but for chemistry. So I think uh, we should revise the statement. All science is either physics or chemistry, biology or even religion and philosophy. Anyway, the, 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 the trajectory of the human self. So I think here, uh, Buddhist philosophy is very important. And as has already been pointed out by Venerable Tandul, uh, it is not clearly the Lord Buddha, but also Nagarjuna and Dharmakirti. And finally, Ding Naga, the, the, the person who expounded the uh, idea of universal facts and so on and so forth. Buddhist logic and epistemology. The, 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 the gap between the subject and the object. Uh, uh, earlier, for example, things were very simple. It was a fixed subject trying to come to grips with an object that also was static. I have already talked about Heraclitus. There was another philosopher called Parmenides who said the wall remains static. And uh, Dandul has already referred to optical illusion. Now, Parmenides would have you believe that the wall remains static. And if you see any kind of movement, it is because of your optical illusion. It remains static. So this is Parmenides. On the other hand, there is Heraclitus. You cannot step twice into the same river for fresh waters are moving in unto you. Now, when we come to this question, uh, now, since I am in the habit of simplifying things, earlier, for example, in pre-quantum days, in pre-quantum days, uh, we tried to grapple with a universe which remains static. So I am also static. The object in question is also static. But then things have undergone radical changes now. And uh, incidentally, uh, uh, Professor Choudhury has also dealt with this aspect. Earlier you were very self-righteous and smart because you know mathematics, you have known the physical world, but there are all sorts of problems because the object is beyond you, beyond you. For example, the, the, the subatomic particles, the movements for example, you can't say anything about your movement. They are here, they are not here. And at times, for example, you may even remember some of the verses from the Ishab. Isha Vaishya Upanishad. Tadai Jyoti, Tannai Jyoti, Tad Dure, Tadan Tike, Tadan Tarasya Sarvasya, Tatu Sarvasya Bajjata. Tadai Jyoti, Tad E Jyoti. It exists. It doesn't exist. At times they look like waves, at times they look like particles, and uh, some others would say that, okay, they are both waves and particles, they are 